Um, before we, 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 we go there, yeah. um, I'll just weigh in on the Nugent report. Sure, sure. You see, um, before people can actually uh, you know, look into what uh, Judge Nugent said, it's worth mentioning that there were actually three other reports, independent reports, which were uh, investigated um, uh, by different people, commissioned by SARS themselves. And when the first two stories were reported uh, on, the, on the rogue unit, they commissioned an, in, an independent investigation. The first one was called the Ganyani Report. Mm -hmm. They hired um, a lawyer called Ganyani to do an, an, an internal investigation. That report came out and said there was a rogue unit, it was illegal, and there was no legal basis. They then said, okay, it's fine, because uh, there are other allegations uh, uh, you know, exposed. They then hired uh, a Judge Sikakan, a panel led by advo uh, Advocate Moses Sikakan. That panel came out again and said um, there was a rogue unit, it was illegal, there was no legal basis. And these uh, reports were, were commissioned before Tom Moyan went there. It was still under Ivan Pillay. He was the one who commissioned them. Then after Ivan Pillay was suspended, Tom Moyan then uh, brought in the, the, another panel uh, led by Judge Kroon. The third one also said there was a rogue unit and, and there was no legal basis. All these three independent investigations have never been challenged or reviewed by anybody in any court of law. As we speak now, they stand because they have not been reviewed by anybody or set aside by and, any court of law. And, and I wonder... And, 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 then, wonder. and, then, and sure. then, and then, no, 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 uh, can, can she give me time to sure. explain? I, sure. I, 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 don't, I don't interject her. Then Judge Nugent, some people tried to get him to investigate this rogue unit. He said it was never part of his terms of reference. And as a result, he had no business investigating it. And then he then advised them to say, anybody who wants to have this matter investigated, she would rather approach other authorities because this is not part of my terms of reference. My terms of reference is about uh, how SARS was mis uh, uh, run down or corrupted by, by some people. And, 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 and so anybody who can say that Judge Nugent uh, said there was no rogue unit, he did comment uh, on the sidelines in, one of, in, in his reports, but he didn't formally investigate it or you know go through any evidence uh, 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 to that effect so it's not necessarily true that he investigated the rogue unit and found that there was no legal basis he did comment in the report but he didn't formally investigate it all right karen he did say that he basically said that there would be he couldn't understand sikakani's report that there was not a legal basis for the rogue unit so he didn't go into massive detail and when i asked advocate mkobani about it she said this is not the equivalent of a constitutional body. We also know that Judge Kroon, as part of the Nugent investigation, came and gave evidence and, and distanced himself and effectively retracted the report that he did. KPMG, of course, also did another report, and they distanced themselves. So what's fascinating with this situation is we now have 11 different reports, very different contradictory messages. And I think, you know, having read them, Kobani report, what's fascinating for me is that she makes a lot of reference to evidence that she has in her possession. We don't know what that evidence is. We know she makes a lot of points of saying that people have withheld certain information from her. For example, the Inspector General of Intelligence 2014 report by Faith Radebe into this unit, which recommends allegedly, as we understand from her report, potential criminal investigation of Pravin and Gordon and others. But I think what's important now is when and if this review actually happens, we're going to have a court of law actually delving into all of this stuff because there are so many different versions of what happened here, so many contradictions, that it's crucial that once and for all that the truth is finally set in stone. And, and you know, when it comes to all of these 11 reports, is there one that outweighs the other in terms of merit or credibility? Or... Is it, because we also have a situation where, like you were saying, Judge Quinn withdrew his statement, and and of course, ultimately, that led to, um, you know, we saw, uh, you know, some of the leading newspapers also retracting the stories that their journalists, like yourself, Pete, had run on the SARS rogue unit. So the implications for that have been enormous, and they've dented lots of people's credibility along the way. So, do you think it's a matter of this? case simply needing to finally be heard in a court of law? No, uh, Kathy. We're not dealing with any complications. 
Here we're just dealing with deliberate uh, uh, misrepresentation of facts by some media organizations and journalists. The problem here, which has caused all these uh, perceptions that there are a lot of reports uh, that are not talking to each other, is that we, are, we dealt with a very uh, problematic situation at the beginning of this situation, of, of, of this investigation, where some journalists, which I call a cabal, sat somewhere, convened by Adrian Lakey, who's the spokesperson for Minister Pravin Gordon, and reached what they call consensus. Uh, the around coverage of the rogue unit. They agreed among themselves that uh, the rogue unit does not exist and went out of their way for a very long time discrediting people who were uh, reporting about facts which did not suit their narrative. They then started discrediting uh, law enforcement agencies and, and also t started discrediting people who were investigating the rogue unit. And, 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 and because of that, it then muddied the waters. And you will know that in an ideal situation, Judge Nugent is a lawyer. He doesn't have any legal powers to nullify an investigation of another lawyer called Advocate Kakan. If you need that investigation to be nullified, we know the process. You go to a court of law, you get it reviewed and set aside. By having one lawyer merely commenting on the work of another lawyer, saying, I think there was no legal basis. It doesn't give him any right to say, as a result, there is no uh, a, a legal basis. So sure. for me, I think it was just deliberate because there were people who agreed among themselves. And, and you know that it's very strange, uh, uh, Kathy, that we are competing as journalists. So you don't, you, you, it's just strange to have journalists sitting there who are supposedly independent yeah, sure. of each other and, 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 and competing but agreeing that there's no rogue unit. Sorry, I, I have to rush you because there's a bite that I want us to take, uh, to take a listen to and there are other issues that I also okay. want, us, uh, want us to touch on, but I think the point has, has been made. So let's then just quickly take a listen to um, this bite from the public protector advocate, Wasisiwe Mkwebani. This is what she had to say about her relationship with Pravin Gordon. It's a, it's a, it's a professional relationship. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, always go back to him if I'm investigating him to request his assistance. It's purely that, assisting me to uh, do my work and there's nothing personal. I said uh, the president should take disciplinary action. I won't uh, prescribe to the president. The president has uh, taken action several times. It's not the first report, actually I should have said that where we've issued and we said the president should take disciplinary action. Uh, the, the, the report against uh, Van Royen, against uh, Minister Brown, against Minister Malusi. Um, so the president used his own discretion to act the, against um, the DG of uh, National Treasury, Mr. Mukherjan. The president acted on that, um, appointed uh, uh, Minister Pando to uh, oversee that process. But now, if the President uses his discretion in this case, I'm going to be very specific and says, uh, Minister Gordon, just a phone call, please don't do that again. Will you be satisfied? He needs to send um, something, th something in writing to the power protector mm. and tell us what he has done to, to do that. If he thinks that's disciplining Minister Gordon, then it's fine. Why must I worry how the president disciplined Minister Koda? Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Advocate Busum Kweban is saying that it's a professional relationship that she has. And of course, one would be confused taking a look at how the interactions have played themselves out in public to that being just purely professional. Um, there is, of course, one end of the spectrum that says uh, advocate Busum Kweban is part of a fight back agenda you know, the narratives of some of the factional battles that are taking place within the ANC. But I think perhaps to lift it then out of that realm of speculation, when it comes to the evidence, and it's one of the things that Ivan Pillay's lawyer was speaking about on the show on Friday, that they want to see the evidence of what Advocate Abusiswe Mkwebani says she has before her to prove her findings. So what would that evidence need to look like, at least from both your understanding. What would she need to produce 
in order to convince and settle the argument of the fact that a rogue unit has, or rather, not that the, the unit existed, but that it was in fact involved in covert activities? Well, I think she's made reference to the fact that she has recordings in her possession. Um, we don't, you know, whether or not that's the recordings that Tom Moyani had of the two people that were apparently part of that unit, what exactly those recordings constitute, when they, whether or not those were recordings done by the unit, that will obviously be pretty pivotal. Um, you know, it's apparent that she, you know, she, she makes mention of the IGI report, but she doesn't uh, concede or admit that she in fact has it. Um, she's asked for it to be declassified as part of investigation. But when she is, if and when she is taken on review, she will have to produce what's called a Rule 53 record, which is essentially all the documentation, all the evidence that she considered reaching her conclusion. And that is then made public. Um, obviously, yeah, does that include the classified bits? Um, well, that's of, of, what's going to be yeah. interesting. In her own report, she's, she's, she's blanked out. The only stuff that she's blanked out really has been this issue of what was the illegal surveillance equipment that was allegedly obtained by SARS. So she's kept that information. Um, something like the IGI report, we know that Tom Moyani, for instance, tried to present it at the Zondel Commission, um, and they were very cagey about that. So, and we also know that at one stage, the, you know, the, the then state security minister was attempting to charge Mkobani criminally for possession of that. Um, so, you know, that report, what happens with that report and whether or not it forms part of the record or not is going to be pivotal because we'll then be able to see whether that investigation, which already is so, con you know, has already been contentious because of these threats of people charging each other criminally, um, what that says and how that fits into what she's found. Sure. Bit very briefly, mm -hmm. um, when it comes then to the individuals that you mentioned earlier, saying that they were part of why this unit was seen as having gone rogue, because they were now involved in, you know, gathering intelligence on individual people, mm -hmm. would, do you think that that kind of evidence would be what is presented by Mkwebani to substantiate her, her case? Is that ultimately what may form part of this dossier? I think it, it will, but it will be more than just that. Uh, she would have to, um, you know, get records of what these people would, would, would have done. She would have to get a, an inventory of the equipment which they would have used, because through that inventory, she, she will then demonstrate that, you know, this, equip, I mean, this equipment could not have been procured for anything other than illegal spying. And thirdly, she would have to produce... But, so yeah. if, if SARS then says, yes, yeah. we were spying on these tax evaders yeah. or potential cigarette human rhino traffickers and they needed that information, would, they not be, would that not be a gateway out? That would be a gateway out, but that's not what they're saying now. <laughs> what they're saying is that there was no uh, a rogue unit which was set up outside their mandate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she's saying it was set up outside their mandate. She requested them for the records, uh, for the procurement and the financial records uh, of the money which was spent to procure whatever equipment. They didn't give it to her. So if she can get that, it will just, uh, uh, I mean, it will make it difficult for them to say uh, it was, the unit was set up for, um, you know, for a good uh, cause, because if you don't cooperate with her, it makes it difficult. But what, what may complicate matters for SARS now would be the um, affidavits of some of the former members of this rogue unit, uh, a, a guy called uh, Helhard Mombard and many other people, which were submitted to SARS after the suspension of Ivan Pile and other people. And, and those affidavits which we have seen are almost uh, self-incriminating. You know, they explain yeah. what, you know, somebody saying, I was there, we did one, two, and three. I was told by so-and-so we did four, five, and six. Yeah. And we have also seen um, uh, uh, TV footage, CCTV footage of the uh, NPA officers which were backed. You know, you can see NPA officials there sitting there discussing cases. So, so that kind of information, if you can present it to court, it will make it difficult for any review against her to succeed. All right, well, we'll have to wait and see what the extent of those details may be. Of course, in the coming days, as I mentioned earlier, we're expecting Minister Praveen Gordon to then um, give a media address setting, or, or at least putting uh, his next steps on the table forward. But I certainly hope that uh, this conversation has helped at least to put 
into perspective some of the issues that are at play here and what to really then listen out for uh, when the various parties who have been named um, are, are continuing in this public spat as we've seen and it seems that that is aspect of it is far from over after the break mark lewis brings you the latest with the sport and as i said a good weekend for uh, our fun and of course mark has always been rooting for the team so uh, this time i would have lost the bet thankfully i did not take one out i uh, do stay tuned